This is example 3.1 on page 95 of our text. Um, here we're going to be looking at comparing an empirical versus a molecular formula. So your textbook defines an empirical formula as basically giving the relative number of atoms in each um, compound, of each element in your compound. Technically, it could also be defined as the simplest positive integer ratio of atoms present, whereas a molecular formula is the actual number of atoms contained within your compound. So sometimes these two types of formulas are the same, and sometimes they're different. It just depends if you could basically reduce the molecular formula any further to smaller, simpler numbers. So let's look at part A of this problem, C4H8. So what we're looking at here, as stated in the problem, is our molecular formula. This compound actually contains four carbons and eight hydrogens. So if we look at this again, we can see that four and eight, they're both technically divisible by four. So we can technically reduce this um, ratio even further. If I were to divide this by four, I would get C H two. So this C H two is my empirical formula. It's as simplified as I'm gonna get. I can't reduce that any further. So empirical formulas, they don't represent the number of total atoms, they just represent the simplest ratio of those atoms. Sometimes empirical and molecular formulas are the same, but not always. So let's continue with B, B2H6. So remember, that's my molecular formula. And B2, H6, technically both of those are divisible by 2. So if I divide that, I'm going to get B, H, 3. And that's been reduced as far as it can. So this is my empirical formula. And then last, part C, 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 L, 4. So it's understood that we have one carbon. We don't write subscripts for one and we have four chlorine atoms. So one and four, that's pretty much as far as we can divide it. There's no common number between those two that we can divide them with and get to a smaller whole number ratio. So this is the molecular formula and it's also the empirical formula because it's already been reduced as far as it can be. So like I said, sometimes they differ, sometimes they're the same depending on the ratio of atoms that you have.